the next question um, was from a parent um, who said that she has a four-year-old daughter who is nonverbal, has been diagnosed with oral hypotonia, and she was wondering what were the chances of her becoming fully verbal. And she said that they've been doing uh, oral exercises for the last six months and starting to lose hope. So I, in this case, I think it's really tricky to answer this question fully. Firstly, um, oral hypotonia, it's very rare that that is the only diagnosis. There's usually something else that goes along with it. Um, sometimes uh, it can be that we see poor uh, tone in children, for example, with Down syndrome. Um, children with cerebral palsy might have difficulty with oral tone. And then it needs to be about the assessment part of it and a really thorough investigation of that. So obviously I don't have all that information to hand. Is there anything else like a muscle weakness, which where we're talking about dysarthria? So is there an, a difficulty with executing the movements or is there a difficulty with the planning of how we move the structures of the mouth so that's a motor planning difficulty that's a dyspraxia or is it a bit of both <laughs> or is there anything else that is involved there that we need to unpick that that might be the reason for it um, also oral motor work has been a very contentious issue for especially our speech and language therapists um, because there, there, there has been companies in the past who made claims about the effectiveness of oral therapies, pure, just that, in improving the development of, of children's speech. And that has been disproved. There is no straw, no horn, and none of these tools that can teach you the speech sounds. What it can get you really good at is blowing and blowing bubbles and drinking through a straw. So it is about what is the functional goal of the activities that you've been practicing. So it really depends on what tasks you're doing and what else is it being combined to to work on the speech sounds. Usually we have to use a whole toolbox and that's why in my virtual therapy room I have my treasure trove of different strategies that I use where we combine different things to try and teach these these pieces because speech is a very complex thing. It's not um, an easy thing to teach. They're what I usually, a uh, way I usually explain it to parents is uh, a baby don't just pop out of the, the womb when they're born and go, thank you mother for the delightful effort you made in my delivery and apologies for the tearing, right? It takes a long time for typical children to develop speech. It is one of the most complex things we can do as human beings because we are coordinating breathing with a lot of muscular movement. We have to move a lot of different things in order to make a combination of sounds and we play around with how that sounds in our mouths and what sounds are coming through our nose. Do we need to move anything in the back of our mouths to change the, the quality of that sound? And then everything that happens in our brain to coordinate that and get the timing right. And how do we choose the vocabulary? How, where are we going to start getting our sentence together? So it is an incredibly complex process. Saying that, and I think most importantly, the message I want to give here in response to this question, I always say to parents, I never say never. I never say a child won't be able to speak because there's always a chance that that can happen unless there is a physical reason that the, the, the brain won't be able to function in that way and usually that's a neurological issue or there's a degenerative condition maybe where that's just not going to be possible that's rare enough very often over time and with consistent practice and input we get it over the line and for some you know it might happen at four or five for some it could be 10 for some it could be 20 but it really is about not losing hope and going for it. Very often what I find is that we go, 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 and we push really hard to try and get that 
progress going and just when we're about to give up and to be honest sometimes I feel like that when I'm like oh I've been doing this for ages I don't know when are we going to see the results and all of a sudden boom we see a great big amount of progress all of a sudden and it's like the biggest reward you can ever have and that's why I have a little dance around my kitchen when a parent texts me and said he said his first word for the first time or he said this word she said nobody really gets how wonderful this is but I know if I let you know how that you'll know how big a thing it is for us and what a big celebration we have about that so there is definitely a chance with developing you just have to do some grafting, uh, really, in order to get there in the end. I hope that helps answer your question.